This new dating advice video geared towards Asian men asks the question, which of these three archetypes most closely describes you and which one should you pick for dating purposes? Yeah, let's play some clips from the video in question. There was a lot of reactions on the internet. Here we go. This video is specifically for all my South Asian and Southeast Asian brothers out there who are down <gasps> bad in the dating market. You have but only three paths you can take and the road ahead won't be easy. But I can honestly say with personal experience, that it's possible to escape the rice pill or the curry pill. So let's do that right now. Let me start this off with one simple question. I want you to answer with 100% honesty. Have a look at these three photographs. Now place yourself in one you think you can honestly strive to work towards with your given genetics. Now whichever one you chose, that's going to be the one that you go with. Often go for a more Chad-like Apollo sort of look but I've found through experience that I have far, far better results leaning to the pretty boy archetype. Although it eliminates my potential for women who have other preferences, my results with them were low anyway, making this trade-off a fairly easy decision. Boom, so this video is from a YouTuber called Kagan Rose, Andrew. I believe he is Southeast Asian. I'm not sure from which particular country. However, uh, there's a lot of looks maxing advice on the internet that's going really viral for guys, Andrew. But this is one of the first times I've seen an Asian guy put it, and he <laughs> specifically in this video labels Southeast Asian guys and Indian guys or like Daisy guys for the advice. So pretty interesting, generated a lot of discussion. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications, Andrew. But you know what, can food max? Food Taste Max, Taste Max your food with smala sauce, guys. It's got a lot of umami, a lot of spice from Sichuan to Sicily. Garlic, onion, spiciness, salt. It just tastes good on everything. Check it out. Shake it up. You know what? I think that that is Sichuan flavors for people who might not like Sichuan or didn't mm. grow up with it. Um, Andrew, I think that looks maxing advice is going so viral right now, even though like some people, they grow up organically learning it from their dad, their uncles, their cousins, but a lot of guys get zero coaching in this particular lane of life. So they need to yeah. go to the internet to supplement it. Would you yeah, agree? I, think, I think the key to just getting better is being self-aware and just being honest with yourself of like where you might stand. And it's all relative to society and your environment, right? Different environments can view you differently. It's true when you're in college, in a if you're an engineer, you're gonna be viewed as an engineer, so then you just need to be a cool engineer. Or if you're in this place of America, or if you're in that country, you are gonna be viewed differently. So it does depend on a lot of different factors. This is why advice on the internet is helpful to get your mind going, but you shouldn't just take it like at face right, value. You need to supplement it with a lot of real life reps. Listen, yeah. guys, a tiger shark can eat a human. A great white can easily <coughs> eat a tiger shark. Uh, anyway, let's just get into this guy's breakdown, Andrew. This guy says that here are the three different archetypes. Andrew, you're either a pretty boy e-boy, okay. which is Timothy Chalamet. Okay. You're an Apollo, which is like half pretty boy, <coughs> half warrior, which is uh, was this Zayn Malik. Yeah. And then you're either that or a Giga Chad, which is like a hyper testosterone, you know, big, strong jaw yeah. guy. I don't even know who this guy is. <coughs> right. Or you could put Jason Momoa in his place, right? But he, this guy's like a pretty boy, Jason yeah, Momoa. Yeah, what? I, so to me, I get what he's saying with these three archetypes. I understand. To me, though, I view them more almost these are just like body types and facial structures. Because you're saying what? This uh, Timothy Chalamet, ectomorph, Zayn Malik, mesomorph, yeah. this guy. I mean, I, I, I would have picked a buffer guy for the Giga no. Chat. But no, he's, but, but he's I'm a, just saying it just goes from skinny, skinny, like clearly not a warrior, and then you have the in-between, which is like the guy that can kind of do everything well-balanced. And then you kind of have the guy who's seen as a destructive, dangerous warrior that could be more toxic, will probably, you know, ladies right. will uh, will protect you, but also fold you up right. in a chair right, when right, you're right, in, right. Uh, I mean, doing the duty. I mean, in body type, Andrew, is this just the Tyrese Halliburton, the DeMar DeRozan, and then you have like the LeBron Zion on like the Giga Chat? Yeah. Right? It's just low middle yeah, high, so right? to me, they're not really styles because you can be viewed as dangerous, more or less dangerous and edgy in all of these styles. Right, like Tyga, I guess, is a skinny guy, but he's viewed as kind of dangerous. Yeah, if Timothy Chalamet got full sleeve tattoos, he would be seen as more as a Machine Gun Kelly, mm. right? But and then, then we Machine got Gun Kelly has got the height. That's why it's so variable. I, I just wanted to use this different celebrities here just to paint it for people. Andrew, Justin Bieber would be a pretty boy e-boy. Zac Efron would be an Apollo, which is the mid-tier, right? And Jason Statham, would you say he would be the Giga Chad? Yeah, beard, usually Giga Chad, you're going to associate 
associated with facial hair and right. buffer muscles. All right, for black guys, I was thinking about it, Andrew. The entire <laughs> spectrum is probably shifted a notch more masculine at a baseline, right? Okay. Just because that's the archetype, that's the societal perception, but I don't know. Uh, because some people would say the pretty boy eBay would be Kelly Oubre, Andrew. But Kelly Oubre is 6'10 and an amazing athlete. So does that still put him in that lane? Mm. Then Michael B. Jordan would be considered like probably in between a pretty boy and an Apollo, right? Because he still plays boxers, right? And then you've got Odell Beckham Jr. And then maybe on the more Giga Chad side for African Americans, or I guess he's British, Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Um, Andrew, here's what we came for Asian Americans. These are Asian Americans. Do you agree with me? I got Keshi as the pretty boy. Or any skinny TikTok guy. Right, and there's it so looks, many the broccoli cut dudes. Yeah, right? I can't like, name them all, but you know what I'm talking about. They're probably about. using a Keshi song or something in their background. Right. Then we got one notch starting to get more masculine, Andrew, Chris Pang. Yeah, not a super buff guy, but good looking and kind of in the medium. O often bro. plays a rich guy in a right. suit. Like not a warrior type, the guy who hires the warrior right, to right, do the business bidding. Or right? a lover. Chris right, Pang right. is a lover. Then we got one notch even more masculine than that, Andrew, young man Zeno. Okay, yeah. No, he's got like a six pack, works out. Right, right. Now we're starting to get into the super, ma like more than average masculine, like way more. Andrew, you got Tim Chung, mm -hmm. Kylie Jenny's bodyguard. Randall Pick, who is a guy who's uh, actually a Cambodian uh, athleisure wear owner. He's all tatted up. Then you've got Kevin Kreider or Simu more into the Giga Chad lane. Yeah, and this is of the Asian tier. Right. Oh. Uh, it was hard to think of a lot of Asian Giga Chads, Andrew. Like, I don't even know, like, some of these people, like, our Asian Giga Chads might be, like, almost considered Apollo in, the, in another Or bodybuilders, like, I guess. I mean, if you're talking about... But everybody here is good-looking. Right. Everybody here is pretty. Right, That's right, the right. thing. So I'm saying, in a way, they're all pretty boys of their tier. Respective body type, right? <laughs> or a height or just archetype. Yeah. Or maybe some of the guys from Physical 100, especially the bigger guys, would be the Giga Chads, right? Um... I also think that there is a hood version to preppy version to hipster version of all of these. Of course. I think there's subcategories of these three. Right, right, right. It's not I mean, this is kind of like types of Asian guys or types of guys, right? But I think the first three, uh, E-Boy to Apollo to Giga Chat are types of masculinity, I guess. Masculine characters. And then there's also styles in between. And you can be a hood or a preppy of each of each one, yeah. Right. Um, somebody said, uh, I think that guys, oh, by the way, I think some of these guys stay in one archetype their whole life, but wouldn't you say that as you got get older, it could be theoretical that somebody could have been a pretty boy when they were young, was Apollo in their like 20s, and then as they got older became a Giga Chad? I yeah. feel like that is like a, just a maturation. Right? Just how you express your testosterone and oxytocin and things. Also, your height, how your face looks, facial hair or not. Uh, like we said, ecto, mezzo, endo on your body type. They could all impact it. He also said, Andrew, in his video, that Southeast Asians should probably not pretty boy max. They should more end up towards Apollo or Giga Chad because of their different bone structure. Because uh, like a lot of Indian guys, they tend to look better and they can grow really thick beards. They're saying... South Asian guys. Yeah, South Asian guys. Oh, yeah. Like Daisy okay. guys. That's what he says in his video. Could you agree I with I guess, that? but how do you even be a pretty boy if you don't got that body type? To me, I guess that's my whole question is genetically how you can't... Some of these things are not an option for you. Yeah. I, I think the only reason why I sort of didn't like some of his things is if you see in this video right here where he switches these two average looking guys to like model faces and he's like, yeah, you should become these models. I'm like, but these two guys in these photos cannot become these two models. It is impossible, right? Um, but he does also go on to say, Andrew, that hyper giga chad bodybuilders with really low body fat are unattractive. Bodybuilders are not for everybody. I know a lot of women who do not find bodybuilders. Bodybuilders are so buff and ripped and their lifestyle is all around bodybuilding. It's like in a different tier. Like, But how do you justify how popular Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the 70s and 80s? But I was also I, saying that that was kind of a different time, right? Yeah. But I don't think every woman wanted to get with Arnold either. Right. And you're definitely like on steroids probably. He goes on to say, if you're 5'7 and below, definitely go for the pretty boy look. And this is where a lot of disagreement was because a lot of people were like, if you're small and you go for the pretty boy look, that's not going to work. And I guess my answer to that is like, it could or it couldn't work depending on what fishbowl you're in. It depends on what fishbowl you're in and also like, to be honest, what you can even achieve. I feel like to get that floppy hair haircut, you need a lot of hair. But like- You need you, a lot of density You can't be a pretty boy and be shave your head bald, can you? 
Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Do pretty boys only have hair? I don't know. So we're just talking about body types here. Maybe you're a pretty boy that always wears a beanie. I don't, I don't know. Listen, guys, the, uh, here's the weird thing about his video is he picked a lot of photos of models. So if you look like a model in your face, I don't care if you look like a model bodybuilder, <clears throat> a model mid-tier body, or a model skinny guy. It's going to work because <laughs> you look like a model. You have options if you look like a model. If you're born to look like a model, you have options. That's when you get to choose. And let's say... Like, to be honest, I guess if you're born in the middle, you have the most options because if you just slim down, you can look more like a pretty boy. If you want to bulk up, you could be more of the Giga Chad. So I don't know. I I get that I hope this video that he made and our video that you're watching right now is helpful and to get you into getting you to start thinking. It'll get your brain worrying. But it is not the answer because we're not, we don't know you. Nobody knows what you look like. So mm -hmm. we can't give you exact advice. Somebody said, uh, man, how come it seems like a lot of Asian guys are just super unaware of this, whereas other more socialized people in their childhood just <clears throat> organically know this? Do you agree with this, that this is information that somebody just like sort of organically picks up? <coughs> because these are, this is a more like, this is not normal yeah, terminology. But, but, but these come from conversations over years of like talking about things like in your family, because like I know in generally, this is a generalization that in Korean families, they might talk more about looks specifically than even a Chinese family right. does. They're like, oh, that is your look archetype. Yeah, like, oh, you, like, you should go for that. No, they'll it's be gonna... very specific. Like, oh, yeah, like, she's really pretty when she does this. Or like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I look like this this K-drama person. I'm going to, like, you know, be influenced by them. Like, no, that's no, very common. When you get a bunch of Koreans in a room, Andrew, it's like <clears throat> watching ESPN detail work yeah. with Kobe breaking down so, Jason Tatum's So I'm game. saying, like, yeah, a lot of people are missing out on it. So... I don't think it should ever discourage anybody because I see some people in the comments that are like, oh, well, you know, it's just so hard for me. I don't know. I'm like, dude, don't just watch one video and feel bad, but only if you've actually like really tried to do something in real life. Right. Uh, the next up was like, oh, yeah, of course, this Asian pretty boy guy is going to say the Asian pretty boy look is the best. And then there was a huge argument about K-pop saying, well, why K-pop only works for celebrities. Some people said no. If you K-pop max, it's going to work for regular girls who can't get to those celebrities. And there was just a ton of arguing back and forth. Other people bringing up photos of old samurais, saying those old Japanese samurais look, you know, or the actors that play the samurais look like really masculine. And then, you know, people saying the Ken Watanabe look versus the K-pop look versus the K-drama look. <coughs> it is true that each one of those lanes, Andrew, the guy you would get to play a samurai, the guy you would get to pay like a chibble evil exec in a K-drama and then a K-pop guy would all have different looks. But I guess what I'm saying is how come there's so much argument over like whether the K-pop look is good or bad for Asian guys? Is LeBron better than Jordan and better than Kobe? What are we debating about? What are we guys, what are we debating about guys? Like, are you, I think that all this advice is good for putting it out there, but it does not give you the answers because there's just a round, of course, guys, if you take this lane and over here and you have this body type, then it works. If you have this body type, you try to do this in this environment, maybe it doesn't work as well. Well, guess what? You never know until you try. Right, like being a thick buff Asian guy is going to work if you want to be the first Asian guy to be a country singer. Because I, I would imagine in the country singer lane, they seem to be a yeah. lot more into like buff, yeah, I, beefy I think bodies because that's a country body. But if you're trying to be <laughs> like a indie pop guy and you're like super buff like like an ultra Jason Momoa yeah. looking Keshi, that might not even connect with that skinny and, tattooed and, and, and audience. Also, what is your personality? Let's say you're a big stocky Asian dude. Well, work out, trim down. And then also if you are very Americanized and you like like blue collar women, then you can like, then that the body is like more blue. You know what I mean? Like there's all these like micro situations that you need more detail for. So that that's why I just... I don't, these videos are just like, it's just going to go in a circle, man. Well, should I set the screen on the right or the left in a high pick and roll? I don't know. Well, it depends, right? You got to read the defense. Uh, somebody said the pretty boy look will fade after 30. You have to start transitioning in your mid 20s. And then people were pointing out this Japanese guy who was young uh, and he used to get compared to Johnny Depp, but then he kind of looked weird when he got older using the pretty boy look. But who knows? I don't know. I, now he looks like a vampire. Yeah, RIP to him, though. I heard he was a re really huge rock star. But yeah, I will say this. People with that look, you know, that crow look, 
yeah, certain looks like they age differently. I feel, I'll say this, Andrew, I don't think Justin Bieber is going to make as good looking of a 50-year-old as he did a 15-year-old. Probably. Well, because maybe he's going to look too skinny. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows, man? That's what I think. But yeah, I mean, it's just different for everybody. I could see somebody maintaining that look throughout their years too, right? Um, <clears throat> this guy just said, man, I was trying to be buff and grow out my facial hair and it never worked. And then I K-pop max finally and my life has turned 180 degrees around. Good. You got to read and react, man. Um, this guy said, as a Southeast Asian guy, we cannot pull off the pretty boy look of the Koreans because it is much a stereotypically slender frame. For example, I think we should pull off more rigid vibes because Southeast Asians were historically seen as bad boys and gangsters or also F boys in the early 90s and 2000s. Somebody said, yes, Southeast Asian dudes should go for hood maxing, which is stuff like buzz cuts, tattoos, and a built body. Do you agree? I would say this. In America... <clears throat> going for a more edgy look, if I was a Southeast Asian dude and I was darker skinned, that's the way I would go. Because then I could siphon into some of that like, like urban energy that I just think that when East Asian guys do it, like nine out of 10 times, it doesn't even look right. You oh, know what I mean? Because wow. like, that's just not the, I'm not saying what is actually people's background or not. I'm just saying like how the society subconsciously perceives it. Yeah. I believe that that is true. Because uh, if we look at Randall Pick, he's tattooed up. And Andrew, even this guy, Brian Puspos, who is a lead dancer, he's playing that more like edgy, tatted up lane, you know, full sleeves. You don't have to get hood tats, though. Mm. You could just get like, uh, you know, just, just some something tats. serious. Not something goofy, though. Um, ultimately, Andrew, oh, all right, this is the last one. Somebody said that this guy found a study said in the UK is that men that have very negative behaviors who have been to prison and have lower IQ are more likely to have more sexual partners because women select for dark triad abusive traits. This is what this guy said, by the way. I'm not saying I agree with this. And somebody said, yes, I know some broke Asian dudes that work blue collar jobs that have better dating lives than way more educated, way more guys with way more money. What do you think of this? Because basically people are saying that it just comes down to fitting what a girl wants to get with when it comes to dating. Because I will say this, in a very late stage capitalistic society, sometimes people stop caring about what your mom told you to care about, which is having really good grades, getting to a really good college and having a really good career. I will say there's some truth to that. Yeah, but I mean, first of all, bad boys have always been popular. Ever since Greece, what is it, 1960s? But is that an American thing? A Western thing in okay. UK. I think bad boys have always been popular. So to me, it's, I think that it's just that when you, uh, you know, maybe you're an ex-con and you come out of prison, there's a group of women who are okay with that. And those women tend to be maybe more uh, promiscuous. Like, there's a market of the promiscuous it, women will be more attracted to you because you look more promiscuous. It changes girls the pools you can tap promiscuous into. Promiscuous girls, generally what? Do they want They want clean-cut guys or they want a promiscuous guy? To date. To date. Yeah, I mean, so it's just human nature. I don't know. I mean, to me, that's not surprising, though. Are they picking Doug Funny or Roger? That's funny because, like, more see, likely picking Roger than Doug Funny. Yeah, and this is where dudes need to make a decision. They're like, oh, am I trying to date around and have fun? As in hook up, or am I trying to just find the best mate and lock them down? Well, guess what? People are locking down later in life, so the play around phase is larger, so they're playing around a little bit longer and more. So therefore, when people are in that mode, what do they look for? Probably more of the bad boys during that phase. And that phase is a little bit longer nowadays. I would agree. I would say this, my one piece of advice for, and this is specifically for if you're from a similar background, even a lot of the people in my family or that I know, not everybody is, but like a really educated Chinese like scholar family that like hates tattoos and like ears piercings and stuff like that. You got to accept some of it because, you know, your grandparents, your parents that are so Confucian and telling you, oh, you got earrings, you're a degenerate. They are not living your life and they're not like, yeah, they're not just going to deal with whatever options that you have in the dating world. So I would say learn to accept some more edginess because it plays really well in the Western world. Um, ultimately, Andrew, what is your takeaway? I think that all these posts, like you said, helpful for somebody who doesn't know anything, but could be a little bit weird if you're just only going to this guy, Kagan Rose's page, and that's the only time you ever think about it. You have to have some discussions in real life with people who actually have real life experiences. 
I 100% agree. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below about our analysis. What do you think uh, about our dating oh, advice? You yeah. know, because I feel like it's, uh, I'm not here to, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm just trying to tell you how to think about their videos and their advice. Because I feel like their advice needs interpretation sometimes. Hey, listen, guys, E-Boy, Pretty Boy, Apollo, or Giga Chad, I didn't even know the spectrum until we made this video. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.